That's the Ed Show. I'm Ed Schultz. Politics Station with Reverend Al Sharpton starts right now. Good evening, Rev. Good evening, Ed, and thanks to you for tuning in. I'm live tonight from Miami. Tonight's lead, Republicans playing politics with national security. Obama, the president, is facing a major crisis with Russians' invasion of the Ukraine. We've already seen Russian soldiers firing warning shots in a standoff today. This is serious, but here in the U.S., some of the right are using the crisis to do what they do best, attack a president sitting in office named Barack Obama. Today, GOP Senator Lindsey Graham connected Ukraine back to the right's favorite topic, Benghazi, tweeting, quote, it started with Benghazi. When you kill Americans and nobody pays a price, you invite this type of aggression. Russia invading Ukraine started with Benghazi? Benghazi doesn't have anything to do with it. But Graham's not the only one launching baseless attacks on the president. This president does not understand Vladimir Putin. He does not understand his ambitions. It's time we woke up about Vladimir Putin. It's time that this administration got real. I think Barack Obama misunderstands the world, that he had limited experience of it and in it. And I think he has proved, as Oscar Goodman, the mayor of Las Vegas, said in another context, to be a very slow learner. I think Putin is playing chess, and I think we're playing marbles. The president doesn't understand. He's a slow learner. What happened to politics ending at the water's edge? And while Republicans are denouncing Russia's invasion, some also can't help but express admiration for President Vladimir Putin. Putin decides what he wants to do, and he does it in half a day. He right. makes a decision, and he executes it quickly. Then everybody reacts. That's what you call a leader. President Obama, he's got to think about it. He's got to go over it again. He's got to talk to more people about it. That's what you call a leader? Apparently, the folks over at Fox Nation agree. They posted a, quote, must-watch highlight reel of Putin doing macho things. Because, really, who cares if Putin is invading a sovereign country? The man is macho. The rights handling of this crisis has gotten so ridiculous that some are even attacking the president's wardrobe. One former Bush official says, quote, talking with the president of Russia about an invasion in a button-down shirt and jeans is not up to the task. And he's not the only one. Obama's, the perception of him and his um, potency, uh in, across the world is, is one of such weakness. And, and uh, you know, I, look at people are looking at Putin as one who wrestles bears and drills for oil. They look at our president as one who wears mom jeans and equivocates and bloviates. Mom jeans? Macho Putin? This is serious. People have died. And America's president is mobilizing the world to respond. Wouldn't it be nice if the right looked beyond this kind of petty politics? Joining me now are Richard Wolf and Michelle Cottle. Thank you both for coming on the show tonight. Thanks, Reverend. Thanks, Rev. Richard, let me start with you. Why is this crisis all about mom jeans and macho Putin for the GOP? Well, it's not new for this uh, Republican Party to approach this president and say, He's not up to the job. He's, you know, uh, 
he's, he doesn't have the intellectual capacity or the moral strength or the backbone to do this job. They've been doing this for years, and, and maybe that's what parties do, right? They, they, there were very similar criticisms coming from McCain about President Clinton and his foreign policy. Of course, they, they ignored the Bush record, and they get very annoyed when we talk about the Bush record. But it is worth considering a president who dressed up in the Oval Office, who, you know, just launched a war that was the biggest foreign policy disaster since Vietnam. For serious Republicans, and for some reason, you know, people in the media still consider uh, uh, Senator Graham to be a, a serious foreign policy person in spite of the comments he just made. But, he, you know, Senator Graham obviously has forgotten one of his heroes. Ronald Reagan had a chance to be tough against the Soviets when they rolled in tanks in Poland during the Solidarity Crisis, and he backed down. He did not, in fact, punish people who killed Americans when the Marines died in Beirut. And yet he was a hero of the Cold War. He ended up, at least in Republican version of events, winning the Cold War single-handedly. So they've got to ask themselves, if they are pretending to be serious about foreign policy, where is the consistency? Well, yeah, yeah, Michelle, I, I want to go back to what Senator Lindsey Graham tweeted. Uh, he said earlier, quote, this is the tweet, it started with Benghazi. When you kill Americans and nobody pays a price, you invite this type of aggression. I mean, why do all roads lead to Benghazi with the GOP, Michelle? <laughs> that has been where they've managed to get the administration on the ropes or closest to it. But, you know, that kind of comparison sounds daffy when you just kind of look at it. But when you think about what uber hawks like Graham and McCain have always thought of this president, it makes total sense because for them, not everything starts with Benghazi. Everything starts with the election of Obama because in their mind, he has always been weak, feckless, not up to the task. And everything that happens on the globe in their mind confirms that assessment. Now, you know, uh, Richard, uh, Mr. Rumsfeld blasted the administration handling of Russia, calling this administration weak. Take a listen. It seems to me the central problem is bigger and critically important America, and that is America's weakness. Uh, specifically, the U.S. is behaving in a way that tells the world we're in decline, that we're in withdrawal. We've created a leadership vacuum in the world, and it is being filled by the Putins of the world. It is U.S. weakness that has shaken the world. U.S. weakness that has shaken the world, Richard. Right. Yeah, uh, well, it, it's, it's rich hearing this kind of stuff from Don Rumsfeld. The name calling must give him some kind of satisfaction, but for start, again, if you're a serious Republican foreign policy minded person, then what's the alternative? Tell us what they think this president should do other than sounding tough or wearing a suit in the Oval Office. So what are the good alternatives, what are the any alternatives, if they are really talking about rolling back uh, Russian forces out of Ukraine, then let's hear them say that. But more to the point, what kind of strength did Donald Rumsfeld project when he got bogged down in the quagmire of Iraq? Did America look yeah. like it was filling a leadership vacuum because of their foreign policy disasters? Or is there a stronger policy in building coalitions, withdrawing from wars that don't make any sense, and maybe, you know, ordering up the attack that killed bin Laden? Well, you know, Michelle, uh, the right wing had a very different reaction, as a matter of fact, when Russia invaded the country of Georgia back in 2008 when President Bush was in office. Karl Rove said, quote, I don't think that Putin spit in the eye of the president. Conservative columnist Charles uh, Krauthammer uh, 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 said, quote, I don't think Russians are reckless. What they are doing is re uh, here is reasserting control. Another Fox guest simply said, quote, there's no easy answer. Russia is a tough nut to crack. So it seems like things were a lot different when President Bush was in and there was this invasion of Georgia than we're seeing today as uh, they're responding to what is going on with Russia and Mr. Putin. Yeah, if you look at their responses back then, they are correct. This is a tough nut. You know, Russia's relationship with Crimea is 
very complicated and there are not a lot of good options here. Uh, but to hear them tell it now, all you really need is a president with unbridled machismo and we wouldn't have this problem or any of the other problems that we've been looking at in the last few years. But, but Richard, they not only blame this president uh, and go back to all of what has been their talking points. The Daily Beast points out now the GOP is also trying to blame the Russia's invasion on Hillary Clinton. Quote, Republicans are pointing fingers at former Secretary of State Clinton, who during her tenure saw resolution and hope in the now fury-filled Russia. Yeah, that's a lot to dump on a Secretary of State. But, you know, if, she, if she's to blame for the reset, then maybe she was just following the lead of George W. Bush, who looked into Putin's eye. I, I, there is, it's, it's so ridiculous, the caricatures that are being played out around this. Um, if they want to play out 2016 on Ukraine, good luck to them. That's seriously underestimating Hillary Clinton. And, and Michelle, uh, as, as uh, Richard points out, it was George W. Bush who said he looked into Putin's eyes, not, not uh, uh, President Barack Obama. So, I mean, are we now so partisan and so petty that we deal with lives, we deal with the possibility of everything from sanctions to military uh, movement based on who's in office and what party, and we do not deal with American interests, American lives, and other lives as a priority over partisan politics? Well, what you have with Republicans right now is the freedom of the party that's not in control of foreign policy, to talk and whine and point fingers and do whatever they want to. Uh, and then it is you know, fundamentally lies with Obama to do what needs to be done. Richard Wolf and Michelle Cotto, thanks for coming on the show tonight. Thanks, Reverend. Thanks. Ahead, developing news in the Chris Christie bridge scandal. The feds turn up the heat on two of his former aides in what's being described as a criminal investigation. Plus, surprise, surprise. Turns out Paul Ryan may have been playing fast and loose with the facts in his new attack on the safety net. Also, surveillance video of a Walmart shooting that's raising some disturbing questions about self-defense and America's gun culture. A fight just broke out near the checkout. A man's been shot. Are That's they inside or outside? Shot. Inside. Okay. Uh, someone's applying direct pressure to a chest wound. Now, one man is dead and the shooter has not been arrested in a case that's reviving debates about guns and justice. Stay with us.